going on everybody? I just thought I'd just make another video real quick about, uh, you know, I had a conversation, a conversation with a friend of mine at work about um, how I think we get so shafted here stateside when it comes to various automobiles that, you know, they get in other parts of the world and stuff like that. In my opinion, we pretty much get the shit end of the stick. But, you know, we, we're just going back and forth on Facebook and stuff like that, just talking. And we got to going over, you know, how different companies would release some really cool stuff elsewhere, and we wouldn't get it. Uh, I'm not sure if they just didn't want to sell it to us or we just wouldn't get it wasn't marketed well enough or or that kind of thing um, it really boggles my mind but then again I am not a car company executive I am just a guy with a camera <laughs> so um, just basically a little opinion piece that I've, I've been thinking about going over <laughs> and what better place to do it than on my drive home from work. So, I was looking back at um, certain car companies, and there are more will come to mind later on, but for right now, I, I have a Ford uh, Focus, an SVT Focus, which I did a, a little video about earlier, and I posted a couple things about it, but... There have been a lot of Fords in my household. So, even going back from when I was a young kid, my dad drove a lot of Tauruses. Um, he even had a minivan at one point, which was... Hey. <laughs> Not my thing, but hey, whatever. <clears throat> my mom drove a lot of Fords as well, too. She moved on to better tastes, thankfully. So, I'm, I'm happy about that. My dad was just really not a big car guy, so um, basically I just wanted to go over the fact that <laughs> the particular company, Ford, has made a lot of really cool things that we just never got here. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, stuff in, in the 70s, which I'm not a big muscle car fan anyway. They're good for really only one thing that's going in a straight line. And they weren't very good at turning, and they weren't all that great at stopping either. I mean, face facts. So, I'm talking about an era that I can kind of remember stuff. So, I'm not going to be going back to, you know, the 80s and mid-90s and stuff like that, where I couldn't even drive yet. I didn't get my license until the early 2000s. That just kind of lets you know how how old I am, kind of, <laughs> so, um, basically when I started, um, driving, and I really was followed motorsports, because I mean, I'm a young kid, I don't really have a lot of money to buy a car, I don't have a lot of money to go out and hang out in places, I was kind of socially awkward, and I kept to myself a lot of the time, so, <clears throat> I spent a lot of my time, like, watching, uh, videos, um, uh, on, uh, what is it, what was it, I think it was Speed Vision, I think it was called back in the day, on cable, because we didn't have YouTube back in the day, so you actually had to watch TV in order to see cars racing on TV, so I started watching, and, um, you know, I really got caught up with uh, WRC, you know, uh, from back in the day, I mean, those, back in that, those days, they had, um, Tommy Mackinnon, they had Carlos Sainz and Colin McRae. They, uh, Petter Solberg was a rookie, uh, you know, he was just coming into his own. And then they had Richard Burns and, and, um, I'm trying to remember who else was there. Uh, Marcus Grunholm. Those, those guys, those who I grew up watching, right? And then I saw that. You know, you know, you saw the WRX, which 
we were getting rumors that we were going to get. Um, you saw the Evo, you saw uh, the uh, Renault. Was it a Renault? No, Peugeot. Sorry, not Renault. Peugeot 206, um, Skoda Octavia. Uh, those kind of cars. We didn't get those here in, in stateside. I mean, we got the Focus in when it came out, I think, in 99, but we didn't get the cool version. We got just like the regular old run-of-the-mill what they sell in the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, you read magazines like Motor Trend and stuff like that. It says, oh, possibly they're going to release a hot version of the Focus, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, shit. That is cool. You know, we're going to get a hot version of a Ford Focus. I mean, the rest of the world always got the hot version of either the uh, they got the hot version of the Escort and they tried to bring the Mercur over here as you know which is really the Sierra and that didn't do so hot for whatever reason I like them but I wasn't old enough so either way but I noticed that you know that there was this Ford Focus out there turbocharged four-cylinder engine all-wheel drive sequential gearbox and this thing was flying especially when you watch McRae drive it he was just a madman behind the wheel and I was like that's a cool car why don't we have one naturally we had the Mustang so with that I was like fully into like Gran Turismo and all this other stuff and and I got to play a video game with a lot of the cars that I would see on WRC and I just for the life of me couldn't figure out why we didn't get those here because people were like yeah we want it we want it we want it we want it and Ford for whatever reason was like nah we're good and then you know you watch stuff like uh, Top Gear and then you see like all right they came out with the hot version, the, the RS, turbo engine, it was only front wheel drive, and had like 220 horsepower. But for back in the day, for a small hatchback to have 220 horsepower, that was a lot of giddy up for a car like that. So, with that, you know, you also hear about, uh, like, oh, well, you know, we're not going to get that. And I was like, why the hell not? But again, Ford for reasons. I don't have that reason, but they had a good reason for it. So what they ended up giving us was the car I'm driving now was the SVT Ford Focus, which translated to the ST170 that they had still selling in the European. So they sold that for, I think, 2002 to 2004 or something like that. They only sold like 10,000 or something, a real small amount. But it kind of gave people here a taste of what Ford was doing elsewhere. So for years, you know, uh, Ford has always had in their reputation here as, you know, their performance thing was a Mustang and everything that they uh, sold was pickup trucks and SUVs and shit like that, which I have no interest in. I hate pickup trucks. I don't find them particularly practical or, you know, useful unless you are hauling a bunch of shit around every day, which most people are. So, I don't see a reason to own one, but a lot of people do, apparently, because they sell like fucking hotcakes. So, I don't understand it, but, and I probably never will. And SUVs, the same fucking thing. I don't understand why people buy them, but they do, so whatever. So that's what we got. We got pickup trucks and SUVs and a little dumbed down version of the Focus and the Mustang and that was it. Oh, so with that, you know, I, I fast forward a couple of years and I actually get out of college and I'm able to buy a car. So, you know, Honda and Nissan and and these Japanese car companies, they're actually, we're not getting the full-on, like, Type R versions, or the Nismo versions, or, 
you know the uh, the hot versions that they have in, in Japan but we're getting a little piece of it you know what I'm saying so we're getting the the 75% of the full-on versions that they sell in the JDM market and Ford kind of did that with the with the focus we got the 75% that they sold in the European market so now you fast forward a couple of years now and I've owned a couple of cars and then I hear that they're going to bring the, the ST to, to stateside. And I was just like, what the fuck? It took you 10 years to think, oh, it might be a good idea. People actually like these fucking hot hatchbacks and people like small cars that are fun to drive and that you can drive every day and that you can fit shit in. And you can only own, if you only own one car, a hatchback with a powerful engine and is fun to drive is actually something that people might buy, i.e. Subaru WRX. They sell like fucking crazy. And anybody who can only own one car nowadays only owns one of two cars, a Volkswagen GTI, Golf R if they have a little bit more money, or a fucking WRX. Those are the two cars that most people buy if they can only own one car. Ford, what the fuck? It's, it's not rocket science. So they sell us the, the, the ST. And, you know, it, it's a good car. It's not, you know, over the top. But at the same time, it, it's not a grandma car like the ones we have been getting for decades now for a decade, I should say. So, with that, you know, the people are starting to get, you know, the mods on it, and having an aftermarket support, and those kind of things. And they kind of get a little bit of a following over here, which is nice. It's like, all right, you guys finally seem to have pulled your head out of your ass, and did something that people had been screaming at you for years to do. So, they did it. And then we start to hear rumblings that they're coming out with a new RS. Now, hmm, are we going to get shafted again like we always do? They make a new RS, the Mark III, I think it was. The one with the five cylinder Volvo engine was fucking sweet. I loved that thing, the noise it made. Um, I didn't see my first one in real life until I actually went to, to Germany and, uh, on, a, on a work trip. And the guy, you know, had it parked or girl, I don't know what it was. And I just kind of sat around looking at it. I mean, I couldn't get inside of it. I didn't want to just be like, walk inside of the guy's place and be like, hey, whose RS is that outside? Can I take a look? No. I just looked at it and I was like, that is a good looking car and we should have it. <laughs> it's just like, that would be something cool to buy. But again, we didn't get it. So the next generation for, uh, RS, we ended up did getting here stateside. And, you know, it came with the four wheel drive, it came with the turbo engine, the six speed manual transmission, it was endorsed by Ken Block, the whole shebang a bang. And finally, you know, some, some vindication after being kept outside in the cold for so fucking long, we finally got what everybody else got a taste of. And, you know, you just be like, yeah, I'm getting treated the same as everybody else. This is a cool car. I'm happy we have it here. Now, the other thing that came as a plus to that was the Fiesta ST, which was cheap. It was a cheap, small car, but it was fun. It was quick. It was nimble. And it's not as practical as the Focus because it was a lot smaller, but... It was still you know, something you could drive around every day and take to the track on the weekend and have a ball with it. And, and that's what a fast Ford is supposed to be. That's what, you know, Ford has been to the rest of the world. Here, you say Ford, everybody just thinks Mustang. And, you know, it has its, its, its to me, it has its sparkling points that... Know, I agree with like back in the day they came out with the the Cobra R which was pretty cool it had the big old spoiler in the back and the 
I think it was a, the 5.4 liter engine or something like that. It made like 390 horses. Great concept. Way to go Ford. Good on you for that. But, and then after that, they had the Terminator, which was the supercharged one. And again, like any other muscle car, you put a bigger blower on it or a smaller pulley wheel or whatever it was, and you just zip down the highway like you do with all Mustangs. You'd be... And then after that, they came out with the, <laughs> the GT350 and 350R. Cool cars. I loved how they uh, initiated the uh, flat plane crank with the V8. That was awesome. And then they also had the new engine, the Coyote V8, which is a cool engine, but there was not enough car behind that engine to get the full capacity out of it, in my opinion. It was still too squishy. Um, I'll go back and forth with the whole Mustang Camaro thing, but the Mustang was a better daily driving car, I would say. It was, it was softer than, than the Camaro was, but that's not that's another thing. But from what I can tell that, you know, they have the, for that, what frustrates me about Ford is that they have the ability to do these things. They have the ability to, to, to make something and you go, wow, that's really awesome. That's so cool that they actually did it and it drives well and it's fast and it's fun and you could still use it every day. And if you can only have one car, you can buy this one car and it could do almost everything you want it to do. They have that ability. They had they had the lineup from you know low twenties all the way to the like the mid thirties. From the ST, from the the, the the Fiesta, the Focus, and then the RS. They had the lineup. It was great. And then Lo and behold, they pull a Ford and yank the shit off the market. Do they still get the ST and, and uh, Fiesta and, and Focus overseas? Of course they do. Yes, of course they do. Do we get it here? No. Again, why? What, what was the point of that? You just came over. Like, here, look, this is awesome, right? Yeah, it's great. It's so cool. We love it. Now you can't have it anymore. I, it just boggles my mind. I don't understand it at all. I mean, I'm I'm contemplating. I'm, it's, time is coming when I have to get rid of this, right? And yeah, it's getting long in the tooth now. It's the car is almost twenty years old, so you know it's just going to have the twenty-year-old car problems that I just don't feel like dealing with anymore. And I do like the car a lot. I really do. It's fun to drive. It's practical. I can take the baby seat out the back of this thing. And I can fit a whole bunch of stuff in it. Just dropping the seats. And it does everything that a fast Ford should. That's why I like it so much. And I'm not in that big of a rush to get rid of it. And I'm probably going to end up buying another car like this. The, 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 the point is that will it be another Ford, an ST, a Focus? It's a good possibility, yeah. Would I have bought a new Focus ST brand new? Yeah, probably. If, the, if we would have got the next generation one that they're trying to sell in Europe, here, I would have bought that car brand new without an issue. I, the only reason why I did not buy an ST from the, oh, that, the ones that we had here is I had a Mazda Speed 3 already. I had front wheel. It was a front wheel drive car with a turbocharged engine. Loved the damn thing. It just, again, too many miles on it. Had to get rid of it. So then I was shopping for something different. As you know, as I've said before, I like things that I like different cars. I like to try new things. So. I went for all-wheel drive and I bought a Subaru. So when I go to buy a brand new car now, which I want to buy one brand new car in my life, at least just one. Every car I've had has always been 
pre-owned. Somebody else has had their ass cheeks in it before I had for an extended period of time. I want my ass cheeks to be the first ass cheeks in it that extend for that have been in it for an extended period of time. So that is a car I would have bought brand new. So if I'm gonna buy a brand new car now, I only have two choices. A Subaru WRX or a GTI. That's it. That's all I can buy. Ford is out of the market. Ford is out of the game. And it's sad because it had potential. I mean, Ford is not making cars anymore, period, besides the Mustang. I guess I'm going to have to move to Europe, I guess. It's just it's stupid. I, I don't have a real good explanation for why they do the things they do or, or how it is. But, you know, I'm not a business major. I'm not a marketing major or anything like that. I just don't. Maybe they know something that I don't. So, <laughs> I don't know. I just figured I'd share this rant with you. It just came to mind. I mean, it, it had so, such, such potential to gain a cult following over here. Like, say, Hondas do or W Subarus do. But <laughs> you can't sell a car for such a short amount of time and expect it to take off. It just doesn't happen that way. I mean, it took decades for the Mustang to get the way it is now. And the way the Mustang is now is the way the focus for Ford is overseas. It took <clears throat> decades of, of Cosworth and ST and RS badging for it to get the following that it has. And it's just sad that it just never had the chance to gain that kind of traction here. I wish it did, but you know, again, I don't run things over there at Ford and they must have some ideas. Do I think we're ever going to see another ST or another RS over here? Mm, no, I don't think so. I know, they, and I know before anybody else comes and comments, oh, well, you know, they have the Edge and they have the, the, the Explorer ST, blah, 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 horse shit. It's not the same thing. So, that's all I got. I mean, it was just an unscripted. It just came to me off the top of my head. I just wanted to get off my chest. I really didn't have a whole lot of collected ideas, but those things were just running through my head at the time, and I just wanted to say something about it. So, if you have any other, you know, comments or, or, or things that you'd like to say as far as Ford giving up on the brand over here pretty much on the state side or hell maybe you're across seas and you want to fucking just gloat like ha ha we got it and you do by all means go for it so yeah that's all I got for right now um, I'll take it easy be cool later <laughs>